for lately as, as these uh, elitist billionaires who are funding some of the leftist agenda come on down the pike. There are groups with harmless sounding names like Americans for Prosperity who are running millions of dollars of ads against Democratic candidates. Obama he promised change. Instead, he brought us more government, more taxes, and more debt. Now he's desperate on the attack. And they don't have to say who exactly the Americans for Prosperity are. Who is he afraid of? Americans for Prosperity? People like you? Well, I'm going to talk about another piece now, Chuck. Uh, Chuck Lewis, you're quoted in this okay. major article in the latest issue of the New Yorker magazine by Jane yeah. Mayer that profiles billionaire brothers Charles and David Koch, who have quietly given more than $100 million to right-wing causes. Jane Mayer writes, quote, In Washington, David Koch is best known as part of a family that's repeatedly funded stealth attacks on the federal government and the Obama administration in particular. With his brother Charles, who's 74, David Koch owns virtually all of Koch Industries, a conglomerate headquartered in Wichita, Kansas, whose annual revenues are estimated to be $100 billion. The Kochs operate oil refineries in Alaska, Texas, and Minnesota and control some 4,000 miles of pipeline. Koch Industries own Owns brawny paper towels, Dixie cups, Georgia Pacific lumber stain, master carpet, and lycra, among other products. Forbes ranks it as the second largest private company in the country after Cargill, and its consistent profitability has made David and Charles Koch, who years ago bought out two other brothers, among the richest men in America. Uh, so they are; uh, these are a very aggressive. Uh, brothers and, of course, the, among the wealthiest people on planet Earth. What makes them different? We have seen rich people try to influence politics in America since the beginning of the Republic. What makes them unusual, and I've been around Washington since uh, roughly around Watergate uh, in the mid-70s, uh, what makes the Koch brothers unusual is the amount of money that they have spent and done it in a stealthy, undisclosed manner, but we have Folks have found out over the years how much the money is, over $100 million, and it's probably much larger. Um, that is almost entirely spent to further the interest of Koch Industries. Uh, it's not, it's, they are uh, ideologues. They, um, their uh, father, uh, Fred Koch, who started the company, was uh, part of the jo John Birch Society. And you know, so we're talking extreme right-wing uh, ideologues. Uh, and to say that they believe in free enterprise is almost too mild to describe their politics. Uh, but what they have done is they have tried to subvert uh, legislation that they saw would impact on their company. Uh, let me give you an example, and this is where I discovered their activities in the mid-90s. Uh, I noticed not only that they were one of uh, Robert Dole, then Senate Majority Leader, running for president against Bill Clinton, not only were they among his biggest donors ever in his long 44-year career, but I also noticed that they funded this thing called the Citizens for a Sound Economy, which there was no disclosure of the donors, but it was obvious they had given huge amounts of money, millions of dollars. They, uh, at, they were being prosecuted for 300 oil spills by the Customs and EPA and Justice Department, parts of the uh, federal government. And they uh, asked the Senate Majority Leader uh, to insert in the so-called regulatory reform legislation a clause that would get rid of any uh, current prosecutive effort by the U.S. government against Koch Industries. And it was uh, the person writing the draft for that legislation was the chair of the board of Citizens for a Sound Economy, former White House counsel in the first Bush administration, Boyd and Gray. Uh, this did not work because several people died from bad hamburgers uh, from an E. coli uh, outbreak. And the public started to realize that maybe we do need regulation. 
and the whole idea for regulatory reform kind of eased and that thing kind of went away but the fact that this company tried to manipulate things to that extent just astonished me i've never seen a bare knuckles uh, move like that quite so obvious uh, it was then discovered that they had cutout groups called Triad, and they were running uh, attack ads in 16 states, running it through a third party, another third party cutout that were nonprofits running these uh, outside group out attack ads. And all the people being attacked were Democrats running against free enterprise Republicans in places where they had manufacturing um, uh, facilities. Uh, and so their activities are not only substantial and almost entirely undisclosed in terms of how much they spend and where, but it's virtually entirely for the furtherance of Coke Industries. And that's what makes them so extraordinary in my experience. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like these guys. And I, I did say in the Jane Mayer New Yorker article that Coke Industries is the standard oil of our time. Uh, this is a very powerful, almost entirely unknown uh, company that is uh, that is exceedingly aggressive in its tactics and its political maneuvering. Talk about the link between well, the chemical yeah. companies that they're involved with, and also just the Koch brothers' funding of Tea Party movements and organizations. Right. Uh, you know the the chemical companies. I, my uh, the Center for Public Integrity investigated formaldehyde and. The chemical companies uh, and the, the industry in general uh, has always tried to, of course, to avoid regulation to keep formaldehyde legal uh, so they can continue to make money. And they have infiltrated groups like the American Cancer Society and all kinds of other groups. So industry is getting in the face of, and in penetrating inside uh, the federal worlds of these regulatory agencies is, a, as you know, a long and old and very sad story. Uh, uh, that article also mentions the Smithsonian has an exhibit that basically has uh, clearly uh, uh, anti, uh, you know, climate change, uh, you know, sort of conservative slash oil industry rhetoric about that whole subject of how the world has evolved and how warm is it getting and all that stuff. And the idea that there's the co this is the Coke wing of the Smithsonian, but then you find out that the exhibits. Um, kind of reflect the Coke industry's uh, view of the world, uh, this oil company's view of the world is, I think, incredibly disturbing. If I was a trustee at the Smithsonian or these other places, uh, or Congress having oversight, I think these are significant issues. I, I don't know the extent to which anything will happen, but it's outrageous. Uh, you know, I have followed Coke pretty closely, but I didn't actually know about the Tea Party uh, involvement, really, to the extent that Jane Mayer lays it out. Uh, it's totally predictable that I now that I think about it because they also helped to fund the term limit uh, movement and the, the Libertarian Party as far back as 1980. Libertarians of course don't believe in any environmental regulation. Uh, and so um, the, the Tea Party thing is just the latest example but as Jane points out is the most populist one. It's got they've actually found a public out there so it's not a top-down it's actually a, it starts to have the public appearance of being grassroots. What what most Americans don't know is that these folks are trained by and and taught, uh, educated, quote unquote, by Americans for Prosperity, a Coke industry group. So now we know who's funding the Tea Party movement, and I think this article is a very constructive uh, uh, thing for the public to get the truth about what's really going on with these folks. Their way, and I want to talk about EPA overregulation, the Environmental Protection Agency. Right now, Congress has not passed what we call, and Congressman King did a great job explaining what cap and trade, or what I call cap and tax, is. This is energy legislation that's going to be put a cost on productivity in the United States. It's going to put a cost. Right now, when we are suffering one of the greatest economic recessions in our country's history, we want to put a cost on productivity, a cost on creating new jobs, a cost on lifting Americans out of poverty and out of, out of underemployment to be able to provide for their families and a better quality of life and a better future. The American dream. This administration and this liberal Congress wants to put a cost on that through cap and trade or cap and tax. And because they're not able to get it through the Congress right now, they want to do it through the EPA. They want to skirt your elected officials and do an overreach, a government power grab. And after the health care bill, we all know what that's about, don't we? 
They want to do a power grab and use the EPA to regulate more of your lives and your small businesses and your farms here in the state of Nebraska. So we're here to say no. We're here to say, I don't want to have to be forced to drive a smart car. This thing, I'll tell you, we're driving down the interstate, you get a five mile an hour crosswind, and you're scared you're going to get blown over. I don't want this, and I don't want government telling me I have to drive this or get control any more of my life. long afternoon. If you can, I'm going to ask you to stand up just for a second here, please. Please stand up, stretch your muscles, get activated, because I remember that you can project your voice more when you're standing up. And I know this is probably unfortunate for many of you, because I see some of these chairs, and I remember when I'm growing up, I have, you know, the plastic wicker chairs like that that's very uncomfortable, but some people have chairs that are more comfortable, like this gentleman over here nodding his head, more comfortable than my lazy boy. That's fine. <laughs> Senator Joe Hans asked us to make a pledge that we're going to tell liberal politicians no. We're going to tell liberal candidates no more government, taking more of our freedoms, controlling more of our lives, and higher taxes. So we're asking you to says, join with us to say November is coming. So will you say that, please? November, November is coming. Is coming. It's time to tell political candidates and liberal politicians that November, November is coming. coming. This is going to be November 2010 when we tell Nancy Pelosi, Harry Lee, liberals, we want no more. It could be 2012 when we have a certain incumbent in the state of Nebraska running for re-election. So we want to tell Nancy Pelosi, November is coming. Five years ago, my brother Charles and I uh, provided the funds to start uh, the Americans for Prosperity. And uh, it's beyond my wildest dreams how AFP has grown into this enormous uh, organization of hundreds of thousands of American citizens from all walks of life standing up and fighting for the economic freedoms that have made our nation the most prosperous society in history. We helped organize huge tea parties all throughout the state. And on April 15th, Tax Day, over 10,000 Californians joined us on the steps of the state capitol, and we held one of the largest tea parties in the country. We have led the largest tea party in the state. The largest Tax Day tea party in the nation on April 15th. Hey folks, we've, we've held 29 tea parties, organized dozens of tea parties. This is a phenomenal success in my judgment. 800,000 activists from nothing uh, five years ago. This is a remarkable uh, achievement. And we're being effective in so many different ways. We had over 9,000 Colorado activists attend the Patients First bus tour. All across our state, our members have said, hands off our health care. Keep your hands off my health care. Keep their hands off our health care. Hands off our health care. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We are sending a clear message to our representatives to vote no on the cap and trade tax scheme. That legislation that you all heard about that will cap America's prosperity and trade our jobs. Mr. Chairman, our grassroots efforts are engaged, they're energized, and they're ready to fight for their freedoms. And the media portrays us as being backed by some billionaire person or people or group, and it's not. We are individual citizens who are just wanting to make a difference. It's nonsense. There is no such thing among our, our people as astroturfing. We are here at our own expense, in our own interest. So I thank all of you for uh, coming here today from so many different parts of the country to make this statement that the American dream of free enterprise, capitalism is alive and well.